Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training, and today I'm here with Dr. Stanier, who was my equine science or equine nutrition professor right. when I attended uh, Penn State. Mm -hmm. And you are a fac faculty member here at Penn State yep. in the animal sciences department. That's right. Um, so I really appreciate your time answering no, some no questions. <laughs> And the questions that I have for Dr. Stanier today are basically some kind of hot topics or some things that are often debated among horse owners mm -hmm. um, involving nutrition. Sure. So the first question that I have, and there's no real direct order to these, so we're going to kind of jump around a little bit. Um, should horses be allowed to drink after strenuous exercise? So that's a good question. It's one that, one that I definitely get a lot. Um, yes. Hmm. Horses should be allowed to drink, but I think that where the, where the question oftentimes comes from um, is to remember that we shouldn't allow them to drink a whole lot after strenuous exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the best advice for a horse that's undergone strenuous exercise and, and may be thirsty after that period of time is to allow them access to some water and allow them to take a drink for you know maybe a minute or two and then mm -hmm. take them away from the water mm -hmm. um, and go and walk them some more and, and remove them from that. And then after another five or 10 minutes, bring them back and let them get some more water. So they should definitely mm -hmm. have access to that water. What you don't want to see them do is to drink down an entire bucket of cold water yeah. immediately after they've exercised hard. And that's where problems can occur. Okay. So that's what we want to try to avoid. It's kind of metering that. It'd be the same as us going for a run and coming back and drinking a huge glass of water. Yeah. Um, that can cause problems. Okay. What would you say are the problems that, that can occur with that? And where do you think that this got so much attention that people got so worried about water and exercise? Um, I think, you know, the, the, the stories that you hear, and I think they are just that, are, are stories, mm -hmm. are that um, horses can colic, um, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, um, that that sudden amount of cold water or water into their stomach, which is relatively small, mm -hmm. um, can cause some distension uh, or, or problems because of that mm -hmm. um, and some pain for the horse. Um, I think it's just unnatural to drink that much water all at once. And so, you know, you may see signs like colic, um, the horse is uncomfortable, that's where it can cause some problems. Mm -hmm. um, I think that these are common because we look at our horses as athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we do undergo, they, of all our animals, they undergo strenuous exercise. Yep. And so they come back from that strenuous exercise and they're thirsty, just like we are. Mm -hmm. When you go work hard, you come back, you're really thirsty, you want a big drink of water. Um, but it's better to sort of meter that water in. So definitely mm -hmm. need the access to water, mm -hmm. um, but you probably want to control somewhat how they drink it. Okay. All right. Um, next question. What causes the hay belly? So when we see horses that just look like they almost have that big belly, mm -hmm. what causes that? So a uh, hay belly can be caused by exactly that. So it, if you look at that region of the horse's stomach, so mm -hmm. sort of back behind their ribs, um, and, and you sort of see that lower portion, it kind of bulges out a little bit. If we could imagine looking inside the horse right there, you would see a large portion of their gastrointestinal tract. Uh, and that part of the gastrointestinal tract, that's their hindgut. Mm -hmm. So many of your followers will know what the hindgut is. It's their large intestine. Uh, and so it's the cecum and the colon are technically the names for them. And those areas of the gastrointestinal tract fill up with hay. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the hay goes because a lot of it isn't digested in the small intestine. Mm -hmm. So it goes back there to be broken down by the microbes that we're all talking about. Well, if a horse has eaten a lot of hay or is on a heavy hay diet, and if that hay is, let's say, less digestible, maybe it's a more mature hay, um, or the horse isn't doing a particular good job breaking it down, then it simply fills it up. You get a lot of that volume there. And again, I think that a lot of people can relate to the fact that hay is very good at soaking up fluid, of getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So if, we take a, if you take a flake of hay, and you stick it into a trough of water, it expands. Mm -hmm. And so that can be where some of that hay belly comes from as far as the expansion of materials that's there in the gastrointestinal tract. Okay. It's usually not things like gas really necessarily filling up there. It's yeah. really the materials that are present in that part of the tract. Okay. And I'm not sure of how much of a problem it really causes. Yeah. It just may mean the horse isn't digesting that hay particularly well. Um, and 
you know, I've seen all sorts of things from that horse simply needing a little bit more exercise mm -hmm. to maybe strengthen abdominal muscles that are going to help hold some of that in a little bit. So it can be a sign of that to some degree. Um, or also getting a more digestible source of forage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Yep. Now, well, we're kind of on the hay topic, sure. um, alfalfa. So alfalfa, some people feed it and they like to feed it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, other people say that it causes colic and they would never feed it. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? So I will say alfalfa does not cause colic. Mm -hmm. I'm confident in that. Um, however, it can be part of the reason that a horse might colic, mm -hmm. um, but that would be relatively rare. Okay. I think um, my personal feeling as an equine nutritionist is that alfalfa is an excellent forage source for horses, the right horses. Mm -hmm. What the things we know about alfalfa are that it is a rich nutrient and energy source when mm -hmm. we compare it to a lot of our other forages. So I like alfalfa for brood mares that are pregnant okay, or brood mares that are in lactation yep. or high performance horses that are exercising at a high level and may need some additional nutrients and energy. Mm -hmm. uh, young growing animals that need some extra nutrient and energy. I don't think that uh, Guinness, my horse, my old gelding that I mm -hmm. ride once a week, has a particular need for alfalfa. Yes. Um, and so I think that that's a situation where you have to make a decision about when you're feeding that. Um, so it is possible to overfeed alfalfa to a horse that doesn't necessarily need it. And you may cause some problems, but uh, I don't think it's going to cause colic. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's a lot more to that story, but yeah. it'd take us a while to get into it all. Okay, good. Um, next question is bran mash. So this is another thing that some people love. Um, you know, they it kind of has, I guess, the reputation of you feed it in the cold weather. Mm -hmm. um, it can have a laxative effect. Is this true? Or I've also heard that some arguments that we could do more harm than good feeding a bran mash. Mm -hmm. So the classic nutritionist answer to all of these things okay, <laughs> is, and this is very unsatisfying for everyone, is that it's everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. um, bran mash in and of itself is not a bad food. Yep. However, uh, the, for example, if you, you know, people say, oh, it's a laxative. Well, it does have a relatively high fiber content, so yeah. that makes some sense. Um, but fiber is a carbohydrate, and so if you take bran mash and you feed it to a horse, all of a sudden you fed it something that maybe it's not getting all of the time. Yeah. And so it gets an upset stomach, and maybe it gets a little bit of diarrhea, and you say, oh, look, it's a laxative, right? Yeah. But that's not really acting as a laxative. It's really acting because it's changing the microbial population yeah. because you're feeding it something that it hasn't had before. Yeah. Um, so I think that you want to be very careful doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I have no problem with wheat bran or bran being mixed into a ration that the horse is being fed on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I think that that can be fine. Um, but I wouldn't feed it as a laxative. Okay. Um, I think that that can be problematic. And there's, a, there again, you know, a, a lot of people talk about the different carbohydrate fractions that are in things, mm -hmm. um, and that's the fiber and the non-structural carbohydrates. And, and bran has its own set of those. And mm -hmm. what you need to do is balance those with the other fiber components of your diet. Well, that will kind of bring me into the next question then, since we were talking about manure. Um, what does the color and the consistency of our horse's manure say about their diet? Can it be a warning sign of problems? So I think that's my favorite question so far. Okay. So again, <laughs> I probably, I don't remember whether I told you this in the equine nutrition class that you took, but I tell a lot of my students that while it's very important to look at what they're putting into their horse's feed troughs, yeah. um, I think it's also as important, if not more important, to see what's coming out of your horse's back end. Okay. Um, so you need to be paying attention to that all the time. Yeah. Um, and so you should be looking at the consistency of that. So how much moisture is in the fecal material? Mm -hmm. That will tell you how well your horse is reabsorbing the water into its body. Okay. You don't want to see a lot of moisture. You don't want to see a horse with what we would consider diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Because what that means is that they could get dehydrated more easily and that their body isn't absorbing that water particularly well. Yeah. Uh, an example of a situation where we see that is a horse that's gone from a high forage diet to a high grain diet. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we'll see diarrhea occur there um, because uh, that high grain diet will cause a lower pH, a more acidic pH in the gut. And it'll yep. attract a bunch of water in uh, and the gut just doesn't perform as well. Yeah. Consistency is also another important thing. So I, I, and again, this is where my students think I'm crazy, but I want you, you know, go ahead and get a pair of gloves if you really need gloves, but you know, <laughs> go down and pick up some of those fecal balls and tear them apart and look at them. Yeah. Uh, what do you see in there? You're going to see some of the hay. You're going to see oats. Yep. You're going to see corn. Um, it's normal for many of those feed substances mm -hmm. to not be completely digested. That does not mean that your horse is not getting everything from them. Oftentimes the, um, the, the oats that you'll see in there mm -hmm. are really just the hull that's left over and what's inside the hull has disappeared okay. and been digested. So yeah. that is not a sign that the horse isn't digesting its diet particularly yeah. well. But I think it's good to be familiar with all the things that are there. There's the old saying that everybody knows, horses are hay burners. Mm -hmm. They have a high rate of passage. A lot of things do go through the horse's gut. And mm -hmm. so it's normal to see them in the fecal material. Okay. It's okay. It's not a problem. Yeah. Good. Now, I know that, you know, everyone's in different areas, so we all have kind of different patterns that we mm -hmm. see. Um, at least in my farm in the spring, we always have the bright green, really runny manure. Sure. <laughs> Can you talk about that? <laughs> so uh, in the spring, so we're here in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and uh, in the spring I would say it's kind of April, May for us, uh, and uh, the pastures that our horse is on, the forages there, are uh, very high in moisture. Mm -hmm. um, and so that means that a, a, a blade of grass might be 80% to 85% water. Yeah. So it shouldn't surprise anyone that when their horse is out grazing on that much water in the feed material that they're eating, yeah. that the fecal material becomes a lot more moist. Mm -hmm. uh, the green also comes from the bright green of that grass that they're eating. Mm -hmm. uh, the horses will be eating a lot of that grass, and so it's normal okay. for their fecal material to become uh, wetter at that point, more moist, yeah. uh, and that bright green color. It's totally normal. And you should really, you know, correspond it with what's going into your horse's mouth with what's coming out. And I think it'll make some sense then. Okay. So that's normal. All right, good. Well, I'm glad I decided to add that question. And I actually can't even take credit for it because it was a uh, viewer that sent it in. They usually do come up with the best. Yep. yep. <laughs> Thank you again for answering all of these questions. And now if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below this video. And what Dr. Stanier has agreed to do is we're going to take your questions. We're going to take some of the best ones or some of the most common ones. And he can do a follow-up session to answer those. Yeah, that would be great. I'd love to. Okay, thank you very much.